So for those of you that don't hi. know me, I'm, hi, love it to see you. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Lucy Brown. I'm the Director of Nursing with Brickery Leadership Development here at the Florence Nightingale Foundation. And part of my role is to host the webinar series we provide for our members and for our alumni. So it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces joining us today. Um, it's an absolute huge, huge pleasure to welcome Rohit Sagu, who um, I've had the fortunate and pleasure of working with over the last 18 months, actually, I think now, Rohit, through a number of different projects and initiatives. Um, and Rohit's here to really share his journey, share his insights into his incredible initiatives that he's been running. But I won't share too much because Rohit will do that um, shortly and share his journey. Rohit is the founder and director of the British Sikh Nurses Association, um, is a PhD student and a fellow children's nurse. Um, I'm really proud to welcome you today. Before we get started, I'll hand across to Rohit, just some housekeeping. We will be recording today. Um, so you can share it far and wide with your colleagues that can't make it with us today. And we will share the link um, a couple of days once we've edited the video today. If you don't wish to be on camera, please do keep the camera off. Um, we will have time for questions. Please do pop them in the chat box. I can ask them on your behalf or there'll be time for questions for you to ask at the end of Rohit's um, presentation today. But we really want to have a lively discussion. So please do jot down some questions you want to ask because we really want to hear from all of you today. Um, to, so that Rohit can share his experience and we can have some really good discussion. Um, so I'm going to hand across to Rohit now, who's going to share his uh, short presentation um, and hopefully you'll feel inspired and we can talk about the innovative projects he's been working on and how you could get involved or how you could lead your own innovative projects as well. So Rohit, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you, Lucy, for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you. My name's Rohit Sagu, as uh, Lucy said, so I'm um, founder and director of British Seat Nurses. If you haven't followed us, followed us, do follow us. I'll give you all the details when I put my presentation up as well. Um, and just want to give you an insight in terms of my journey um, through British Seat Nurses and being a nurse for the last 20 years. And also, most importantly, about nurse leadership and innovation as well. And thinking outside of that nursing box in terms of what you can do and creativity outside of nursing. Um, you know, we have our nurses box that we have. So, so many things that we have within the box that we do. So our normal fundamental principles of nursing, what we do every day for our day-to-day -day care thing, uh, caring for patients as well. And also thinking outside of the box in terms of what we can do to innovate and be entrepreneurial within nursing as well. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, just to begin with, in terms of it, so that's kind of my... Um, uh, you can follow us on Nurses Seek and on Instagram, Facebook, uh, British Seek Nurses, and we've got a website as well. So the kind of just pictures of who I've met and what we've done, the people who support us. I'm glad that Ruth May supports us as well, and Andrea Sutcliffe from um, the NMC. So if we think about what I've done over the, just thinking about what I've done over the last six years, I started British Seek Nurses in 2016. I actually sat down just across my sofa, just to have the innovative idea. I walked into a Gurdwara, which is a Sikh temple, um, and we I saw the volume of people walking around with, you know, either obese or, you know, the numbers that we have in terms of the South Asian community of um high obesity rates high high pressure high blood pressure rates and diabetes and thought we need to do something about this is there something i can do and so i started pretty sickness in terms of just reactionary to a proactive thing to work with the south asian community um through, through that journey what's happened what happened was the health department of health and social care got in touch with me and said you know you've tapped on something that we haven't you know seen before but we'd really like you to work with us to expand our work as much as possible so i worked with nhs department uh, nhs department of health and social care nhs blood and transplant services in terms of organ donation and stem cell donation and also dkms and anthony nolan and mary curie resuscitation council and many other organizations that we've worked with as well um, and we highlighted issues around organ donation mental health and just the physical aspects of making sure that uh, there was good physical health within the South Asian community as well. We've done quite a bit of work since then with um, va uh, vaccination hesitancy and the myth busting around vaccinations as well and working with um, working on TV, so on South Asian television channels as well. And that outreach work is what I really want to touch on um, later on is the outreach work, engagement, and also bridging the gap between the community and the NHS as well, the South Asian community. There was a 
what I found through the work over the six years, there was lots of mistrust with the, the NHS. So it's really about bridging that gap and building that trust between the communities as well. From our outreach work in terms of it, grassroots of, uh, work, what we have um, and what we've uh, established is around four, I use social media as a massive platform for myself as well. And we have around 40,000 followers in total from Twitter across all our platforms. Um, and we use social media uh, in terms of the mainstream mainstream networks that we have, we also support living donation families. So I had when I worked with um, uh, NHS blood and transplant, we worked with registering before the law was changed with Max and Kira's law. Before that was changed, we work with a lot of families, and we worked with registration, increasing the registration um, of. Um, organ donation rates as well. But what I found was a lot of families came to us looking for living donations. And these are families that are very quietly just going about their business, looking for um, you know, a living donation and South Asian families that don't come forward. So we supported them with their organ and stem cell donation campaigns as well. So it's a really good personal touch that we had in terms of what we what I was doing. Obviously, bridging the gap between the South Asian community and NHS was important. And so therefore, we also had volunteers that came towards us. And eventually, we've now got 70 members as well, which we'll be talking about for the international nurses that we have as well. So we've got around 70 members. Um, we also stepped on an idea to turn around and look at screening, health screening, our congregation, which in Punjabi we call Sangat. And we, you know, going into the uh, Gurdwaras and, you know, to health screening them. And we approximately to date, we've actually screened around 3000 people. And there's a huge, every time I do this, I do this every Sunday, I'm doing this on the 15th as well, on the Sunday, coming up very shortly. But every time I do this, we do this once a month. And the volume of South Asian people that walk around with undiagnosed hypertension always shocks me. Um, and so it's one of the key things that we just pick up and we refer to their GPs. And I think it's those key grassroots work that we do that aren't picked up, may not be picked up until people are unwell and they turn up in A&E, that we actually do it beforehand as well. We've also led on projects as well. So many projects as well. So this is a picture of the uh, the, fa the families that we've worked with. Um, the top girl with the NG tube in her name's Anaya. She was she came to us at her family came to us at two when she was two years old. She was born with um, uh, kidney problems at birth and she was been on dialysis since and was looking for a living donor. We went out nationally and looked for a living donor for her, eventually found someone and they came came up um, and they gave her a kidney. So to both donor and recipient and doing absolutely wonderfully well. And so there are families that we work with in terms of supporting for living donors as well. So, you know, a few of the campaigns that we've run are for Kidney for Bali, which is the, the young man with the glasses, and Kidney for Simran, which is uh, next to Anaya. So she's the young lady there. She's actually now doing, I think, public health in, in university now after doing that, after having her kidney transplant as well. Um, we also branched out. So it's working partnership. And I say we loosely because it was me doing this for quite some time on my own. And you'll find out the journey in, in a while as well. Um, so we branched out with other organizations as well. One of the organizations, uh, Sikh organizations that we have is uh, an organization called Nick Nishkam Swap. And they work with homeless people. So they go out and they um, give food to the homeless. But what I stumbled across with another person that we joined up forces with was to make a health division of Nish Nishkam Swat. So another innovative idea what we could go out and we could give um, care to the homeless as well from a healthcare perspective. So we do that as well every Thursday. So Thursday, uh, the ambulance goes out and it cares for the needs of the homeless in terms of their health and well-being needs as well. And we also give little packs as well to the homeless. So toothbrush, toothpaste, um, sh shampoo. And so they can be able to have some personal hygiene for themselves as well. So that's quite innovative in terms of what we do there as well. So we do lots of stuff in terms of that as well. Um, other projects have um, been proudly um, involved in is the National Day of Remembrance with Mary Curie. And also at the moment, our current project that we're working with is the Resuscitation Council is to improve CPR training in the Sikh and broader South Asian communities as well. And so we've got together with a couple of nurses. One of them have, uh, is a cardiac specialist nurse. Um, and we're going around the temp Sikh temples to deliver CPR. Um, we found that studies with bystander CPR was 
prevalent and that people needed to you know get trained in terms of CPR because if it happens to a loved one then you can at least step in and do something about it um, and so they're the projects that we've kind of run in terms of it as well so we've worked with the RCN as well and done some bespoke community work with the RCN there's a short video that I've done with that also I've collaborated we've collaborated with the NMC to improve the Skiffin standards um, as the Skiffin standards were drawn I think just a couple of years ago a year ago it was really about um, having grassroots community work, but actually just having bridging that gap with grassroots organisations as well. And if we think about nursing and we think about thinking outside of the box of nursing, if you're a community nurse, you're going to you know, deal with your patients and et cetera. But it's touching those bespoke organisations like faith group organisations like ours or, you know, and in getting in touch with charities and et cetera to really make sure that you've got an all round holistic service for your patients and your care and your, the care that you're delivering as well. Um, I was proudly also with the Royal British, of Le Royal British Legion this year, so they featured me in their program for their BBC, uh, the BBC this year when it was in um, Royal Albert Hall. So it wasn't actually at the Royal Albert Hall; it was the program that they distributed. So I was I was sitting there watching the TV, thinking, "Oh my goodness, King Charles and Prince William have got my program in their hand." I hope they read it because I think I was on page eighteen. So that was a real good thing to think about. Um, and that was a nice feature because they wanted to feature community work, you know, bespoke community work and out, you know, really good, hard to reach communities where you do some good work out in the community. So that was a pleasure to do. Um, in terms of grassroots nursing, I'm just going to show you a quick video in terms of just thinking outside of the box of nursing as well. Um, and one of the key things in terms of grassroots nursing is you know working beyond the walls I always say this is but working beyond the hospital walls and that's really key I know that we've got community nurses and I've got fantastic nurses that do lots of stuff out in the community but it's taken that one step further beyond the community and thinking about where else can I go um, and where what else can I do and um, we're all innovators if we really think about it and the good effective leadership and successful innovation stem from team-centered work in practice and I think that's really key in terms of it as well. So just a quick video that we did for Nurses Day with the RCN. So I'm just going to quickly show you that. Hello, how are you? Are you breakfast for you? These are the nursing staff who look after us day in and day out. We live our lives reassured that they'll be there when we need them, keeping us safe. As you know, you work for life and safe on the procedure. Leading care everywhere they're needed from when we're young and unaware of their value to when we're older and recognise it so clearly. Can I help you? There we go. Yes. Every one of us will rely on nurses from the moment we enter the world to the moment we leave it. Not just caring for us in our homes, but caring for us if we don't have a home. Toothpaste and toothbrush. Caring for our families. Ben, I need to do your weight. And caring for us as individuals. How are you doing? Do you want to follow me through? They provide everything we need, from emergency care to looking after us longer term. This is a good explanation to help with your life. 24 hours a day, nursing staff use their experience, knowledge and compassion to provide the expert care we need. Okay, two tablets, four times a day to improve our quality of life and get us back on our feet. That's lovely. We owe so much to these professionals for their incredible dedication through the toughest times whom we simply can't live without. I'll take a seat. Thank you to every single member of nursing staff. We appreciate everything you've done and continue to do today and every day. No problem, you're welcome. You are the best of nursing. So that was a, a really lovely video that we did with um, at the RCN for Nurses Day, and it just showcased nursing outside of the hospital wards as well. In terms of what we've achieved so far, so we've improved the stem cell registration rate with DKMS and antineurium up to 10,000 uh, within the South Asian community. So that was campaign drives that we did up and down the country over the last four or five years.
Uh, we've increased the organ donation registration rate to 500, potentially saving around 5,000 lives from organ donation. And also living families, we've supported four or five, five living families so far in terms of looking for an organ donation um, living donor. And also we've supported, uh, we've health screened around 3,000 people. And I think it's up more than that. It's probably now 4,000 people across the sea community um, carrying out screen. Uh, you know, health screening drives across the doors, across the Midlands, London, and we're now expanding actually to northeast of England as well. So it's it's going further and far beyond as well, working with other organisations. Um, the other good aspect that we have in terms of the 70, 70 nurses that we have um, with us as well is also the international nurse recruitment uh, grant that we got from uh, FNF and the NHS as well, which is a wonderful thing that we did. So we produce self-care packs um, for our nurses in terms of it. So looking at, you know, techniques of decision-making processes and supporting our nurses as much as we can and pastorally supporting them and professionally supporting them as well. So really thinking about when they come over to this country, um, what kind of tran the transition and the adaptation that they have and how to support them through that transition and adaptation as well. Um, and looking at mindness, mindless, mindfulness and self, you know, self compassion as well. And also increasing our membership. We look at increasing our membership as well. So we run groups of activities as well. And we have a time bank facilities, which is a really amazing thing that I kind of uh, invented a time bank thing where you can actually just put everything that you want into a time bank um, and reflect on what your stories as well. So it's kind of reflective practice, but you do it in time. Um, and it's a really good innovative way of, you know, nurses looking back on their lives and looking at what they're doing throughout their time here to turn around and say, how can I improve? Where the things can I, what can I change? Um, and we support them with that as well. So there's lots of um, educational support and teaching support that we have with uh, our international nurses and nurses that are domestic nurses, homegrown nurses as well. So we encourage that as well. So we have a lot of um, members from the, the UK as well. So home home talent is is something that I'm really passionate about as well. So it's not just our international nurses. It's also about training our, our home nurses as well. And as a male nurse, making sure that we have lots of South Asian male nurses out there as well. So it's good to see male nurses out there as well. Um, just our journey. This is our journey. So it continues. Um, so yeah, lots of work that we do around the Gurdwara. So this showcases the work that we do and, you know, taking square health screening and the teams that we work with as well um and the notable nurses at the bottom that you know support our work which is wonderful you know likes of uh jennifer pearson and you know felicia kwaku and also ruth may as well so it's wonderful to have them support our work um and finally recognition so i, I you know it's nice to I love doing this work and I don't do it for an applaud and I don't do it for claps and I don't do it for anything else. But when, you know, my wife sees my work and she puts me forward for these things and I just end up finding out, oh my God, I'm nominated. Um, but it was wonderful just to get the Faith and um, London Faith and Community Awards in 2018 and the British Indian Awards in 2018. And I think the highlight of 2020 was actually um, the 15th, 14th Point of Light Award, though it was <laughs> awarded by Boris Johnson, which some people might question, but he was the Prime Minister at the time. But I think that the other highlight was the Royal College of Nursing Awards in 2021, really recognising um the work that i've done over the last six seven years um in in nursing i hope that's inspired you all wow yes <laughs> lots of nods please do turn your cameras on if you feel a bit shy please do pop questions in the box but wow rohit i i just i find you completely inspiring i'm sure the audience do too but what drives you what motivates you um, how do you <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible i'm thinking how do you fit it all in as well <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, that's a big question, actually. How do I fit it in? So, like, lots of I, I, I'm spinning lots of plates um, at the moment. So, I have lots of things that I'm doing, which I, Lucy, you're kind of aware of as well. So, I've got I set aside to um, set aside to nursing. I've got a passion in snooker, so I'm uh, in the game of snooker. So, I'm actually a director of a well senior snooker, and I'm also a director of the English Board of Snooker as well as a trustee for an organ charity organization called Let's Talk About Loss, which, uh, which looks, at looks at young people's loss, young grievers, 
So it doesn't look at those who are old, it looks at young grievers between 18 to 35 who have lost somebody that may have been older or younger or a sibling, etc. So it's a wonderful work in terms of what we do with Let's Talk About Loss as well. But I think what drives me is the passion that it is, is nursing. That's it, it's caring for people. And I think part of my half of part of my passion is also from the tenet of the Sikh religion, uh, which is about selfless service, and it's called Seva in Punjabi but it's about selfless service and just giving yourself to, to the community and I think that's one of the key drivers that we have even those nurses we all do selfless service but um, I think it's just ingrained within me personally uh, through my faith as well at the same time as well but I, I love also breaking the rules and um, generating insight to knowledge as well and through traditional ways of like just looking at experimentation, exploration, improvising. And if we think about nurses, we're all problem solving people. We're not just problems that we not just problem solve. We look at the problem and we solve it as well. So it's breaking that, you know, convention of what we normally do all the time. And if we think about the patient care that we deliver every single day, and I'm thinking about nursing outside of the box now, um, you know, you deliver care every day. There are innovative practices that you probably subtly do that you don't think about. And it's really capturing those innovative practices and thinking, can I take this much further? And we all know that we do um, service and quality improvement plans as well. But ask yourself one question, in terms of the trust that we need, we'll do a quality improvement plan. How much will it be taken further than the paper that is written on? And that's the question we need to think of. We've got these wonderful ideas. What stifles us is resources, money, et cetera. But I think what we need to do is take that one step out of the box and saying, no, we've got something here that we need to practice on, that we need to really deliver and that we need to put in implement as well and I think that's really key in terms of what we need to do as well it's about us being transparent open-minded willing to communicate and you know have that team that you're going to com communicate with as well and most of all I think this is really key is just being a visionary share your vision most importantly share your vision be willing to work hard to meet that collective as a team as well if you've got a team just work it work it as a collective collective as well and motivate your team and just be realistic and believable in terms of what you want to do deliver and when I sat with British Sikh nurses I thought what am I going to deliver what am I going to do um, and I started with health screening and to be honest it was me going up and down the country and I tagged my wife along she's my backbone and my support and I'll say that just in front of everyone um, I tagged her along she's not a nurse she's in banking she doesn't know a clue about nursing but I tagged her along we set up stalls we put a banner up saying organ donation got NHSBT and we just talked to people and we got them signed up and you know 500, 500 people later there's a potential of saving 5,000 lives and out of that families came forward and said my god we never had this South Asian families come you know our child's been looking for a living donor can you support us yes we can so I got them on television got them out nationally Anaya's campaign she was on Good Morning Good Morning Britain GMTV you know she was with Philip and Scott Philip Schofield and Holly she sat there, their families, once they got, you know, we got it that far. We got it that far. So it's just have that vision and push it as much as you can. Incredible. So inspired lots of nods across the group and lots of comments in the chat box from it. Um, I'm just going to ask a couple more questions. I'm going to go to the group if that's OK. But yeah, what sure. would you say? So it, it sounds you're, you're incredible, such an inspiration. And I, I, I admire you enormously. And I imagine that the group do as well. Is what tip, three top tips would you give? How do you get started on innovation? What three top tips would you give to people who wanted to innovate and want to take it forward? Um, I think the, the three top tips I would say is be passionate. You know, pa your passion exists as a catalyst for change. Um, it's contagious. Make sure it's contagious and it goes out to your fellow team members as well. That it that you know, and push the boundaries of your innovation as well. Keep pushing. Um, the way I've done it with British Sikh nurses, we started working with Department of Health and Social Care. DKMS came to us, Anthony Nolan came to us, um, and suddenly Mary Curie turned around and said, we'd love to work with you. So you kind of do this. And it, all I'll say to you is, um, I've done this on my own time. Everything I've done, I'm a full-time PhD student. Before I was that, I was a senior lecturer at um, City University and Anglia Ruskin University teaching children's nursing. So everything I've done over the last six years has been excess uh, in extra time. You know, um, I also have a, a son. And so I had to dedicate my time to my son as well at the same time. 
but and family so my wife my son and you know juggling everything else along with it so you know it's spending I don't know how I do it because I don't know how many hours in the day but I just you just do you just have that passion to keep pushing boundaries and just keep pushing yourself forward as well I think be optimistic um yeah. reduce that notion of failure most importantly um you know for your innovation just keep that positive momentum for what you want to drive forward um and your idea you know push your idea throughout your team and your organization as well so if you've got an idea that you've got all of us have done sort of quality improvement plans and service improvement plans that we can push that idea forward as well keep pushing um yes there's resource it's going to be resource intensive yes there's money to towards it but if it's something that will change then make it change um i think in the two 2022 nursing awards there was one person who um changed something with um disposable gloves and it was done in his trust however it wasn't taken forward nationally so that's the thing you know is taking these ideas nationally and turn around saying how can we do this reduce the cost of you know um disposable gloves how, can, how can we do this if it's been done already then take that nationally as well um and i think going back to the most important one is just um breaking the rules we've got to we've got to break the rules that's it you know we live in i know that we live with accountability and i know we live with um so much pressure in terms of what we do so if we think about nursing in terms of it half of what we do and the half of our most of our commitment comes down to our registration and accountability to our patients and i think sometimes you need to break the rules in in accordance to what you need to do but breaking the rules in terms of just exploring uh, that experimentation have that innovation as well and, and that improvisation in terms of doing something and making a change and making a difference as well because then other organizations will see that and they'll back you they will back you there are so many people out there that are pushing for you know innovation but they're supporting innovation as well and that's what you need you need a really good team that supports your innovative work absolutely and tenacity isn't it i guess at first you don't succeed try and try again that failure isn't it so so important over here incredible there's lots of comments coming to the box i've got one from i'm sorry i don't know your first name Dee Devereaux. i'm um, just as it sounds great i'm happy for you to ask it if you wanted to but i can ask on your behalf it would embarrass you so what do you think this sounds great however going outside the box can often be taken for granted rather than being acknowledged as an innovation what are your thoughts on that right here um but it depends on how you sell it as an invitation in innovation that's the most key bit so it could be but take it take the risks that's the whole point you know if you're going to think of an idea outside of the box then take the risk there are so many things that and when i think entrepreneurial we don't think entrepreneurial in terms of making money you're not going to make an innovative product be on dragon dragon's den um and suddenly you're going to be a multi-millionaire it's not that it's what we do day to day to turn around and make a difference for patient care and make a difference to ourselves as well i think one of the the key things about innovation is making a difference for nurses themselves first as well as um you know making it easier our practice easier what kind of things are we doing to make our practice easier not only that what kind of things are we doing to um improve patient care as well so the little things that might make a change um the disposable gloves idea was just fantastic and you know he's he's won an the leadership award out of it from the nursing you know an innovation award from you know the nursing nursing standard uh, you know, and that's it and that's the most, Royal college of nursing and that's the most important bit and i think the other thing is don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back either i think one of the key things that we don't do as nurses is go for it go for awards you know we look at award ceremonies and we turn around and think let's not put ourselves forward or let's not allow our teams to put ourselves forward if you've got a really good innovative idea and it's worked it's had impact and you've got an evaluation in terms of what you've done don't be afraid of putting yourself towards an award it doesn't mean that um you know if you don't put yourself forward you're not going to get through you might get through you might get on you might get shortlisted once you're shortlisted you might just win you just never know and once you've won you've got a, a platform to turn around and say to shout on and to turn around and say this is how it works and this is what i've done um pretty seek nurses came from nothing to where it is now um and it's just that keep you keep pushing you keep working you keep pushing you keep innovate not innovating but you just keep reaching out to people and you just keep your numbers up um and just keep targeting areas that you need that you think people need help in um homelessness we've we've gone through you know the channels that we work with 
are the homeless people across London and Birmingham. We work across, you know, the supporting organ donation, living donation families, you know, all sorts of stuff. So these are very bespoke work that we're doing, but it's supporting people and caring for people. And that's really key of what we're doing. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. See, um, Celia, I hope you don't mind. I've noticed you put a couple of comments in the box and one's for you to go and speak at the RCN, I think, in West Kent, where it hit your free. But also I think she commented about the work that um, seat communities have done with hospices. So Celia, are you happy to try to put you on the spot? I wonder if you'd be happy to share more about your comments in the box. Um, hi, hi, Lucy. Thank you. Hi, Celia. Sorry, I, I've, I've just been um, away from uh, uh, my uh, laptop for a few minutes because I had to answer the door to someone. Oh, don't worry, no, don't worry. I was just saying about your so, comments. You've added a couple of comments. I wondered if you wanted to elaborate yes, further. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, um, I'm uh, I'm not uh, involved with, I'm not an officer of the local RCN branch, um, but I'm always nagging them and uh, spotting, looking out for people to come and speak to us. Um, so, uh, Rohit, I'd love to put you in touch with the uh, the branch officials uh, and arrange later in uh, the year, perhaps for you to to come and speak to us if you'd be willing to. I think it would be really helpful and inspirational. And as I mentioned in my other comment, although this is some quite some time ago, um, one of the local hospices, um, uh, which was called the Lions Hospice in uh, in Northfleet, Gravesend, Kent. I think it's now called the Eleanor Lyons Hospice. Um, I've always uh, had great support from the Sikh temple in Gravesend, and it's really been very, very impressive. And the other thing that I was impressed with, with uh, that Sikh temple and others, was when there was a, a backlog of lorry drivers trying to cross the channel after Brexit came in and there were sort of huge backups and they were all in that uh, place. I think uh, that they've since accommodated some of the uh, people who crossed by boat. Uh, but the Sikh temples went down to uh, just outside Dover and made sure that these drivers were who were waiting for days often to get through all the various sort of checks. Um, the, uh, the Sikh temples went down with hot food and drink for these people and kept them going through a very difficult period. And I thought that was a wonderful community action. No, I, I totally agree. And I think the organization you're probably talking about is uh, um, a good friend of mine, Ravi Singh, Rakar Saeed. He runs an organization. It's an international organization that they give food. The essence of it really, to be honest, in terms of giving food is uh, within the Sikh culture, we have a, a communal kitchen. And so if you, I, and I'd encourage all of you as nurses, there are some nurses that are now suffering with the cost of living crisis there are nurses now having food banks but i'll tell you one thing for sure from a Sikh perspective um go to your local Sikh gurdwana because the four doors are open and you can get a hot meal um and it's one of the things that you all probably need to encourage your patients to do um and it doesn't matter what religion you are the doors are open as long as you cover your head take off your shoes um, and if you've got a penny or two doesn't matter or two and you can just put a penny or two in the box as as a donation that's enough but you will get a hot fed a hot meal and that's one of the key things that we have within the Sikh tenets of the Sikh religion we also mm -hmm. have, also have something called dan which is where we give 10 percent of our wages to um the Sikh community and that's why you see the Sikh community thrive within um Sikh temples as well I can see a couple of people jesse and surrender nodding um and just sasri akal to both of you as well that's say hello in punjabi to him so i'm just being a bit um kind to him um but uh you know it's it's it's, it's one of those things that we do so me and my wife do that so we give 10 percent of our wages to the sikh temple that they can then thrive and give food out to everything else as well so on top of that we'll take milk we'll take rice we'll take fla flour for the chapatis and etc and so forth as well so we'll do that as well but it's just core within our values to do that and i think that's 
that's one of the innovations that we can really expand across as nurses as well, I think. Mm. So it doesn't have to be a faith-based thing. It doesn't have to be. Mm. But, you know, but coming, can... sorry, interrupting you, Rohit, but um, Celia Manson again, just coming back, I mean, the the tradition, the hi historical tradition of a tithe um, to the church in England, which in medieval times, of course, was still a Catholic Christian church, uh, but then uh, became a Protestant church. Um, there was a practice of giving a tenth of one's income to the church. So it's quite interesting to hear about that from the Sikh perspective as well. Um, I think it's wonderful, it's in inspirational, and that's why I'm going to urge my colleagues in, in the RCN West Kent and Medway branch to invite you to come and speak to us, please, uh, because that would be fabulous. Um, you probably put it up at the beginning, but I forgot to write it down. Uh, could I have your email, please? Of course. We'll, we'll share. We'll share that at the end. We're going to with email. Lovely. We'll send Thank you, we'll Lucy. I'll oh, shut up now. No, no, doctor. It's lovely no, to meet no, no. you, Celia. Lovely to welcome you again. I think I'd like to invite um, a Jesse to talk. So, Jesse, I'm loving that you finding your inner rebel has completely. Oh, one minute. One minute. <laughs> you should pop in some ear, earphones in. But Jesse, you've made some wonderful comments. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Hi. Sorry, my manager walked in just as you <laughs> said my you, name. No problem at all. Um, yeah, um, I just, yeah, obviously wanted to say thank you. Um, I'm obviously Jessie, a band five nurse, um, also working in children's um, on the ward, um, but I'm really into QI. I tend to spend a, a bit like Rohi, um, after work, I am doing like the QI Leadership Academy courses and things like that. So that's why I came today. And uh, yeah I think I just saw my role model <laughs> uh, for where I want to go and I just aligned a lot to what he said um, and it's just kind of given me some posh to kind of um, start organising some of the projects that I've been looking at um, yeah especially at the start of the new year I'm really keen to to finish some off so yeah thank you so much for this great webinar. Thank you for joining us Justin. Thank you. And Jesse, and uh, you're welcome to join us on our CPR uh, project that we're doing at the moment. I mean, what we're doing right now is just the CPR project in, in conjunction with the Resuscitation Council. So we've been running this for a couple of years. Um, and so we go out to the temples. And so far, we've trained, uh, I think we trained our 80. My vision for this, my entrepreneurial vision for this, is actually put to put a defibrillator in every Sikh Gurdwara throughout this country. Um, not only that, to take that even further by training the priests in bystander CPR, so they're able to use a defibrillator and they're able to do whatever they need to do as well. Um, because we know within the South Asian community, heart disease is massive, it's huge. Um, I, I'll say honestly, I've got high blood pressure myself, so I'm on tablets myself at the same time, and I'm type 2 diabetic, so I am the cliched South Asian with those health anomalies, though I look fit and healthy, but I'm those cliche, I'm the cliched South Asian with those health anomalies. And that's the other passion that drives me to turn around and say, we need to really sort this out because the volume of under, un, you know, undiagnosed hypertensive patients, and that's throughout across the board. It doesn't matter if you're South Asian, um, but it's about doing health screening in churches, in synagogues, in mosques, in Hindu temples, just, stretch it these are the innovative ideas that you can do um and we're and that's face-to-face -face patient care that's real face-to-face -face patient care where you're really diagnosing something um and you're sending it off to the gp um and referral you know we're referring to the gp and it's all done with policy practice and etc so we're covered with the nmc mm. covered by our indemnity insurance we're covered by everything and actually doctors join us as well so we've got lots of other teams that join us as well. So allied health professionals and doctors join us, dentists. When we do the homeless run, there are dentists that come on board. Physiotherapists come, come on board. So lots of other you know, nurses, midwives, everyone joins us together to help the homeless in terms of just their, mm -hmm. um, just their health needs as well. And giving out a health pack to a homeless person, I, I love it because, you know, they're searching for something just to have, a shower or toothbrush or toothpaste or just uh, you know some shower gel or deodorant and that's it and we have a vision of what's really changed about me in terms of just working with the homeless as well over the last six years we have a vision of the homeless being unkempt etc and so forth it's not the case 
there are some people that are suited and booted that go to work on a nine to five, cannot afford London housing rates at all, live under a flyover in a tent. They'll come in suited and booted and they'll need food and they'll need um, the essentials for personal hygiene as well. So it's those things that we do, those small things that we do that can really expand and make a difference um, in terms of our nursing practice as well. And that's really thinking outside of the box as well. So, yeah. you know, think of all the pockets of organizations, the pockets of um, groups or you know, institutions that we can work with that can really, really just, we can lend a hand to. So even if it goes beyond your capacity of work, between nine to five or between a long, long day shift. That's what nursing's about, is taking it beyond that shift. And I think that's the real, the real key. And you can drive that beyond that and it can eventually become your full-time business. I'd love British Seek Nurses to be my full-time business in about five, five years, five, 10 years. But in reality, it may not happen. So it needs to be charity status, et cetera, and so forth. But I'm, it does not gonna stop me doing the work that I need to do. And that's the most, that's the key. Um, and I think that's probably what I'll retire with in terms of it and even go beyond retirement just doing this work. So I certainly can't imagine you retiring really. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> I think you've answered really eloquently actually Dee Devereux asked how do you fund and finance these projects but that sounds like lots of it is really high initiatives with partnerships isn't it? Partnership. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to kind of elaborate further on that? Yes of course I mean for the first I'll admit it for the first few years we give 10% of our wage my, my me and my wife so we use that in terms of the funding as well so we use some of that in terms of funding so it was self-funded for the last far for the first four years it was self-funded till about um for the first four years we self-funded then we managed to get some uh nhs bt funding from the community in, in community investment scheme that they had so we got two rounds of funding for organ donation um and living donation in, in terms of that as well um, I've had funding from FNF and NH uh, NHS as well in terms of the international nurses, in terms of what we're doing. Um, and we have our first inaugural conference that we're running. So you are all welcome. Please log on. To, please go on to um, our Twitter page at Nurses Seek. Um, and we're first doing our first inaugural conference on the 20th of uh, January, Friday. It's an evening conference. There'll be a three course complimentary three course dinner along with um, a little bit of um, Bangra at the end as well. So we'll do a bit of you know, Punjabi dancing and a little kind of thing there. But uh, we've got notable people that we uh, you know, are gonna be there. So uh, Ruth May will be there by video link. And we've got um, Sheila Sobrani, the new president of the RCNA coming to join us. And Lucy, you're joining us as well. I'm so, coming along, yeah, I'm coming along. So can't please wait. do register, it's, it's absolutely- With my dancing free. shoes. <laughs> It's free to attend and it, you don't have to. We're doing this in association with the, the, the South Asian Association of South Asian Midwives, which is another organization that's working with um, um, those um, expectant mums as well within the South Asian community. So you don't have to be seek to attend. You don't need to be anything. You just need to turn up as a nurse and we'd welcome you and we'd love to have you there and connect with us that's as well. So generous. Thank you. Yeah. So generous. Thank you. Um, I think I'll just probably time for a couple more questions. Paul Jones, I've noticed you've been, uh, Peter Jones, I've incorrectly said your name. You've um, shared some quotes this isn't, and some this studies. Isn't the, I'm going to say this, this isn't the Peter Jones. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure, but perhaps if we'll turn his camera, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, are you happy to share your insights? You've shared some really interesting links. I've had a chance to digest them all, but really about thinking outside the box and how you feel inspired. Are you happy to share your thoughts or... Any questions for Rohit? I popped him on the spot. Maybe he's gone to answer the door. We'll come back in a moment. Oh, he's a, no helicopter. He's in a public location. Oh, so he can't unfortunately talk to us. That's a shame. Keep typing away, Peter, and we'll share your insights. So, um, thank you so much. <laughs> Bless you. Well, all welcome to come along. So I might go out to the group. Is there any questions people have been brave enough to ask Rohit? Any questions? I'm sure I think there's some people saying about. I mean, shared, Peter shared a really interesting article on homelessness uh, for you, Rohit, so we'll make sure you get a copy of the chat. You can take that back with you. Um, I'm just quickly going through all the comments, make sure I don't miss anyone out. I think for me, I, I'd really love to hear, oh, Sarinda, please do. Over to uh, hi, um, this is the first time I've been on here and I don't work in the NHS. I'm a, um, I work for a medical company. So how can I be more involved in, um, 
part of the Aboriginal Sikh nurses. Oh, you, you, anyone can come and volunteer with us. That's not a problem at all. Mm. So you don't have to necessarily be from a, um, a medical background at all. You can come and volunteer with us. So when we do our, when we do our homeless drives, you can come along. When we do our um, health screening drives as well, you can come along and do that as well. So we, we, our health screening drives, uh, you know, drives have got bigger. So we're working with another organization called 13 Community Clinic now. And so what we do with our health screening, uh, health screening drive is one section of health screening, but we've also got lawyers and stuff that also talk about, and social workers that look at, um, you know, look at the congregation and their needs in terms of social care as well. So it's kind of working together. And that's an idea that we all need to go with is how we get health and social care work together as well. So that's what we do across one platform as well. So and that's yeah you're welcome to do that so when we do stem cell drives we can teach you how to do stem cell oh, no, I'm a, I'm, I am a nurse but I'm a colorectal nurse but I work from medical yeah. industry oh no so come along join us. Get join us if you're a nurse that's even better come and, join, gonna... us. Come and join us on our CPR um, I've been a nurse well. for 30 years um you know when you talked about the defibrillators yeah. so um I'm from Birmingham and the Ramgay Sikh temple in Birmingham they had a major incident in a wedding where there was about 900 people at a wed seek wedding and I was there as well so was my brother who's a color um who was an orthopedic surgeon and a, a, one of the gentlemen had a heart attack and obviously myself and my brother was asking for the defib and never had one so I took it on board to find them a defib and I went on for, went on for about six months back and forth and I got got involved with a heart foundation to get them a defib but the the, the Sikh priests and the and the community um, presidents would not pay for it. They wanted me to pay for it and give it to them for free, which was unacceptable by the Sikh community and the, 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 the call them some committee where they want funding and stuff. But they have money, but they weren't willing to because the fire brigade and um, the ambulance service said, where is your defib? Has a community Sikh temple with a congregation of 900 people at your wedding, there should be a deep fib in your service. And it's still to this day, they still haven't purchased it. Yeah, that's, that's sad to hear because actually we, our, well, our first CPR session was actually done at Birmingham Ram Gurdy Hospital. Uh, no, because photographs, I recognise the photographs. Because wow. yeah. my sister-in-law was one of them in the photographs because she's one of the, the presidents for the, the female committee. And they're, they're, they're still not, because they tell you, know, um, you're in the photograph, so do we still have the defib? Um, unfortunately, my brother passed away a few years ago um, on holiday. Um, so obviously he couldn't persuade them anymore, but they still haven't got one. <laughs> Email me. It's probably a conversation that we can have outside of this, because um, yeah. it's something yeah. that we're looking towards in terms of targeting, because... Um, yeah. You know, you you know it yourself. Every Sikh Gurdwana has plenty of money. Of and course, to spend, to spend a thousand pound on a defib is not a problem. It's not a problem. The defib is not the problem. It's the it's the training, and yeah. that continuation of training, which is the most important bit, and that's the yeah. kind of key thing that we need to do. And this goes for every um, religious organisation or any institution as well that has a defib. It is that training. So if you've got it in an office environment, if you've got it in a you know another environment here and then in a shop environment it's having the trainers and that's mm -hmm. the key thing is it's ensuring that they've got you know updated training and the continuation of training as well so it's not a case of just you know i think that the easiest bit is to buy it and stick it on the wall that's the easy part but training people is the most difficult mm -hmm. part. that's where mm -hmm. you know that's where my vision comes in terms of just making sure that everybody is trained and that we can continue that as well okay thank you Thank you. Thank you, Sarinda. Thank you, Rohit. But what an amazing session. I, I feel so inspired. I always feel inspired in your company, Rohit, anyway, but now I think collectively even more so. There is so much you can get involved in. Obviously, as Rohit kindly invited you all to, to the, the 20th, to the, the conference, which I'll be, it'll be great to meet you all in person if you can make it along. I'm, I'm certainly very excited about it. But also, if you want to get involved in any of the initiatives, as Rohit said, you don't need to be from a Sikh background. Um, obviously being a nurse would be helpful for the CPR campaign as well. It's something I'm hoping to help you with Rohit as well, down in the Southwest region. Um, but please do get involved. Anything you'd like to know more about, 
We'll share the slide and it's got Rohit's contact details on, but obviously contact me via the FNF as well if you want to get involved in any of our initiatives as well. Um, I, I think what I've learned from today, my takeaways, Rohit, is, um, is really that selfless service is what we do as nurses every day, but to continue that out into our communities is so critical, isn't it? Supporting our schools, local communities, temples, wherever that might be, get involved, see where you can help, food banks, etc soup kitchens, whatever that might be. And I've certainly been inspired to do that. So thank you. Um, breaking the rules. I think Jessie certainly, it certainly feels like a rebel now. I think I do too go and break the rules that they're to be broken. So I'll be going off to do that along with Jessie. But also about getting involved. And I think that's what's critical, isn't it? As we said, get involved, put your head above the parapet. And if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So Rohit, I am, I feel goosebumpy even from, from today's session. So thank you so, so much. And please do get involved. And thanks from all of us from the FNF for giving your time so selflessly um, to share your, your great initiatives and inspire so many. So thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Obviously we recorded today. Please share with your colleagues far and wide. If they'd like to get involved and thank you for your comments as well. It's wonderful to have that chat and um, for being bold and asking questions too. Um, all the best everyone. Have a wonderful weekend when we get there and um, thanks for your time. Thank you.